Computer programs can really only do three things. One, they can manage data. We talked about UiPath variables in a previous tutorial. Two, they can perform conditional logic. That's if, then, else. That's what we're going to talk about here, the UiPath if activity. And they can do things very quickly in for, while, or do while loops, which will be the next UiPath tutorial. Here I want to talk about the UiPath if activity and how you create simple if else conditions in a UiPath application. To do that, I'm going to start up UiPath Studio and create a brand new process and I'll call it UiPath if activity. It's not a very creative name, but I'm not a very creative guy. And when this opens up, I'm just going to drag the if activity onto the main workflow. I may have to search for that in the activities panel. And there it is. And it comes up and it says, hey, let's figure out a condition to evaluate here. If the condition is true, the then block runs. If the condition is not true, the else block runs. Um, and so what's the condition going to be? Well, it has to be something that evaluates to true or false. And nothing evaluates to true better than the word true. It's actually a reserved word in UiPath. But if the condition is true, what do you want to do? Well, in this case, I'm just going to display a message box that says it is true. Okay. Now, what do you do if it's not true? Well, that's the else condition. I think version 21.4 has the show else link. I don't know if that's available in 20.8. But if it's not true, I'll print up a message box and say it's not true. And there you go. That's your basic UiPath if then activity. And I can run this. Now it's true. So I should get a message box that says it is true. And it runs. And it is true. Well, what else were you expecting? Now, of course, you can negate these conditions. You can say not true. And that will give you the opposite. So if you say the condition is not true, that means it's false. And then the else block will run. So let's run the file and now you see the X block, X, the then block running, which says it's not true. And so there you go. You've got your basic conditional statement in UiPath here. Now, of course, people usually want to evaluate conditions. And so evaluating condition usually means responding to a variable. So let's add a variable. Uh, I'm going to add a new variable to this program. I'm going to call it the counter. And it's going to be of type int32. And I'll even give it a default value. So the default value will be 9. So let's take a look at that. It's got scope for the sequence. The default value is 9. That all looks good to me. Um, and so we can make the condition. So the condition could be if the counter is less than 10. And I'll put a little space in there to just make it look a little bit more handsome. And so is the counter less than 10? Well, it's 9, so that's true. I can run the file and I get the true condition. And of course, I can also do if it's the counter is greater than 10, which, you know, of course, is going to be false. So I get the false condition. It's not true. Um, and you can even like have not equal to. So you can do counter not equal to. So you've seen the Condition for true, condition for false, condition not equal to. Um, we saw the not, which negates a true condition. Um, and here we can actually run the file if the counter is not equal to 10. Well, it's 9, so that is true as well. So that kind of gives you a whirlwind tour of that UiPath if activity. Now, if you want to take this one step further, I've actually got another tutorial on nested if then statements, and it shows you how to create a little number guesser game in UiPath Studio, which actually takes input from the user using the UiPath input box. So if you want to take your knowledge a little bit further, go take a look at that tutorial. But this gives you a good quick overview of how conditional logic and specifically the UiPath if activity, how it works.